Jesus said to love God and to love people. That's what we strive to do at Kingman First Assembly. One way is through our various ministries. Ministries to our children, our youth, and our families. Ministering to marriages and those that have life-controlling problems. So no matter how big the problem or how uncertain the future, Jesus has promised to be with us. So join us as we share God's love with people here in Kingman and around the world. A place for everyone. A place for everyone. A place for everyone. For everyone. 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 sing the beginning of the year are you a seeker of God and um, this month is almost over the first month of this year of 2013 is gone we have inaugurated a, a, a president for a second term I don't know what the future holds all I know is ho who holds the future and in God I trust amen and uh, so uh, I asked uh, that from the beginning of the year of 2013 and I, I, I start off by saying you know people are seeking something everybody's looking for something they're looking for uh, this or that um, they're looking for someone trying to emulate somebody um, some seek this fame fortune uh, but I feel that everybody is seeking something and my question is what are you seeking and whom are you seeking and I again want to ask us that uh, we would seek Jesus we would seek after God I'm challenging myself as never before to seek after him as I've, I've not done and so uh, I'm going to seek after God and, if, and then it only stands to reason that if I'm going to seek like him, then I'm going to have to be like him in every way, every day. So number one on your little card right there, to seek after God means we desire to be more like Jesus. I told you to turn over to Colossians, the third chapter, did I not? Colossians, the third chapter. We'll get there in a minute. But the word tells me that I need to seek the things that are above and have left less emphasis on the things here on this earth everything around us is perishing my body is perishing and until Jesus comes and changes it it's going to perish and turn back to dust uh, I believe in the power of the resurrection I believe though like Job says even though uh, this this body may turn back to dust, but with my eyes I shall behold him. I'm going to see him. 
And, but I believe that Jesus' is, is nearness is coming very soon. I believe in certain prophecies that say this generation shall not pass till all be fulfilled. The generation of World War I, the veterans of World War I have all passed away. The World War II veterans are all in their 70s and 80s. And that generation has almost passed away. The people of, that were born in 1948 when Israel became a nation... Uh, are moving closer and closer to 2048, when that will be a 100-year anniversary since the founding of Israel. And I believe what Jesus said, I believe what the prophets say, that this generation, these people, shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. So whether that's next week, two weeks from now, 20 years from now, I'm expecting him any moment. Amen. So I'm keeping my eyes looking up and I want to be more like him because I want him to recognize me when he comes. Okay. That's what the gist of our message is this morning. Now, people would say, well, then, uh, you know, well, then we should all just sit around and, and pray all the time and, and just go to church 24 seven and everything else. And, and the truth of the matter is we have to take care of things of life. We have to uh, feed our families. We have to clothe our families. We've got to provide for transportation in this day and age. And we've got to provide for housing and all, all those things. And God knows about that. But God says, don't let that be your emphasis. Because you could have the, the biggest house. I was watching last night about this man who uh, murdered his wife. And uh, they had, uh, what, 50 acres or something, Debbie? And, and she had this big old horse ranch. And, and um, um, you know, I thought, God, you, 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 you could have all the things of the world and yet be empty and be unhappy and be lost. And so it's not things that are going to satisfy. You can have all the things in the world and still not be happy, still not be satisfied. And so... The Bible tells us that let us be content with this, that God has provided all of our needs. Now, if he's blessed you and you're, you're uh, blessed, well, share that blessing with others. You know, give and it shall be given back unto you. And, and that's what I've learned to do, that God has blessed me. Other people along the, my journey have blessed me. And so I've learned to bless others. And like Pastor Paul was talking about, part of Speed the Light is blessing others other people that that cannot have what we have in this this great nation of ours and so so uh but we're not to be covetous we're not to be chasing after things that are going to perish we need to to get our priorities straight and the first thing that we need to do is to seek after the things of god to really seek god and then to build our families together. And it is difficult in this day and age. It is so hard. We have so many uh, strikes against us. It's, it's even hard. It's almost unfair to get up to, to the batter's mound. Because you've already got two outs and three strike, uh, two strikes against you. And you're up there and you're ready to bat and everything else. And, and this is the best pitcher in the world. And he's out to get you. And just to take you down. But Jesus told his disciples in the Sermon on the Mount, he said, you know what? My father loves you. My father will take care of you. He says, look at the lilies of the field. They don't toil, they don't spin. And yet Solomon in all of his glory were not arrayed as much as those flowers. And I have seen flowers and, and just see the beauty of it. And I see the beauty of of uh, nature and I see all this and I see what God has prepared for us and it's beautiful the sunset that you you cannot get by and yet God has given that to us free gratis he don't, he don't we don't even have to thank him for it and there's people that don't even thank him for it but he's provided all that and he says he says look at the birds of the air he says you know uh, your heavenly father uh, feeds them and he uses Pastor Dan to feed them so that they get big. And my 
sparrows out there yesterday. There was over a hundred of them sitting out there on the line, all waiting for God to feed them. Well, they were waiting for Pastor Dan to speak to um, God to speak to Pastor Dan, so Pastor Dan would get out there and fill their little things so that they could all eat. And they're as big as vultures now. And and I tell you, if the tribulation happens, I'm, Debbie and I are going to eat good. We're going to have a squab every day. They, these sparrows, they're not sparrows. I mean, I think they're, they're I, I don't know, they're big as chickens. And these, these doves, those ring-necked doves, man, they are huge. They're like turkeys out there. It's just unbelievable. And, and so, you know, if God uh, takes take so much interest in, in the the fields and the beauty of nature and birds he says don't you think that you're a little bit more valuable than than they are and said in fact he says and i like what pastor paul said you know he, he even knows the numbers of hairs on your head and when one falls out now some of us it's kind of a hard job i mean keith's got a lot of hair there but but jay you know when one falls out god doesn't have to do too much arithmetic he just says Okay, well, there's one more less for Jay, but, you know, he's still got a few left, so we'll take that. But anyway, God says, God, Jesus says, your heavenly Father knows what you have need of, and he cares for you. But his requirement is this, seek him first. He says, all the, the rest of the nations, all the heathen, they all have these needs, and he said, but you seek me. You seek my kingdom first. And all these other things, God's going to take care of. And he really does. And he really will. And I believe it. So he says, don't worry about tomorrow. There's enough problems about, about tomorrow. So seeking first the kingdom of God is, is our, our first number one priority. To, did I say, number one, to seek after God means we desire to be more like Jesus? Did you get that? Okay, good. I didn't want to get ahead. So you're in Colossians, the third chapter, and we're, we're going to read some passages out of there, but I'm not going to read the whole passage. I'm just going to read these little things because I want you to say, see this. He says there, if you've been raised with Christ, in other words, if you've been born again, he says, seek those things which are above where Christ is. Now, Paul, do you think Paul was a, a Jesus seeker? Do you think he wanted to emulate Jesus whenever he went? And yet, to make ends meet, he was a tent maker. See, he was not above doing labor, if that's what he had to do to put food on the table. And that, that's not, see, sometimes people think, well, you know, uh, we're just going to lay back and God's going to provide all this stuff. No, no. God, it, God has promised that he's going to take care of us one way or another. So God provided Paul a job so he, while he was out ministering, he could do that work there and not have to depend upon the people because the people that he was ministering to were very poor. And some of our missionaries do that too. They go into places where there's great poverty and they, they help the people there. And so God is, is, is uh, there to help. And so Paul, writing to the church at Colossae, says, seek those things that are above. Those things that are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. And then he says, set your mind on things above, not on the things of the earth. Now we get all consumed with all the things on the earth where we're worried about the economy, we're worried about this and that and all these things and about president and Congress and everything. And, and, you know, we're supposed to be concerned and we should be involved about those things, but we don't have to be consumed with worry about them because God has everything under control. God is God. He has wrote the finish of this whole scenario. So if he knew from the beginning how it was all going to end, don't you think he knows of everything that's going to go on in between? So our matter is just to trust God. Uh, Todd, is it too noisy? Or 
yeah, I'd like them open because uh, we need just the air circulating, okay? Because it is, it is warm up here, especially up here. So, so today I want us, us to foc on, uh, focus on our life to be like the image of Jesus. He says, set your mind on the things which are above, for you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. You died. When you came and you asked Jesus into your life, you died. You gave yourself to be somebody else's. So you died. And when Christ, uh, uh, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. So number two, we need to focus our life to be like the image of Jesus. I'm going to say it one more time. We need to focus our life to be like the image of Jesus. Um, when I uh, uh, wore contacts, uh, when I take them out, everything would be out of focus. And when I would put them in, then everything would come into focus. And as I grew older, I started looking at the small print, and it went out of focus. So I had to go to bifocals. Now, I, I had laser surgery, and so that was great, but it didn't help my uh, nearsightedness. I guess that's uh, the, the term. And so I still needed to wear bifocals to see. So my top layer is pretty clear, but my bottom layer is really high so that it can bring things into focus. So what God is telling us is that we need to focus our life to be like the image of Jesus. Now, how are we going to know what the image of Jesus is like? Where are we going to find this out? Uh, are we going to call Hollywood and ask them what the image of Jesus is? Now, you call Hollywood and they say, this is the image of Jesus. Hey, my children. Blessed are those, you know, that come to me and find rest. You know, that's Hollywood's version of Jesus. You know, how are we going to know the vision of Jesus? How are we going to get a vision of Jesus? Read the what? The Bible. So, so if I'm going to, to look and see a vision of Jesus, then... I need to get into this word, and I need to study this word, study it so much that I'm a, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. In other words, I need to know the Tanakh, I need to know the Torah, that's the Old Testament, I need to know the, the uh, poetry books, I need to know uh, the New Testament, I need to know what they knew about Jesus, Paul, after he became a believer, he was raised under the best of the best at the time, Gamaliel. He is still a revered rabbi in his writings. And, but Paul, for seven years, studied the Tanakh, the Torah, the scriptures, to see Jesus. He saw him on the road and he says, in fact, he did not even know who it was. Because he asked the question is, who is it, Lord, that I'm persecuting? And the voice came back, it is I, Yeshua, it is I, Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now the light was so bright that it caused scales to form over Paul's eyes and later uh, Ananias laid his hands on him and he received his sight but Paul studied himself he studied everything so that when he talked to another Jewish uh, person he could say have you not read the scriptures remember when Jesus was walking on the road to Emmaus and he began to open the scriptures to them and then all of a sudden they saw who he was. They recognized after he broke the bread. Their, what, what happened is their, their image came into focus. We ate bread with him. 
we didn't know it was him and then all of a sudden just the way that he was we recognized who he was now when people are looking at us who do they see what do they see do they see the image of Jesus that is imprinted upon us now let's go clear back to the beginning back to Genesis because if we're going to focus on being like Jesus, we've got to raise our, th our, our thinking level to understand who we are in the first place. If we're nothing but a worm, then a worm you shall be. But we're not a worm. I was not created to be a worm. I was not a created to be an amoeba. I was not a created to be a lizard. I was not a created to be a dinosaur. I was not created to be a monkey. I was created to be a man. And this is what the Bible says about mankind. Male and female. So let's look back. If you don't believe me, here's what it says. Then God said, let us, who's he talking to, make man in our image according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle over the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so God created man in his own image in the image of God he created him Male and female, he created them. Now, when Adam was created, everything that man possessed was together. Now, when he separated them, took the rib, and made the woman, that part of the man, that is the... Uh, right side of the brain, which side is it... <laughs> Women use all parts of their brain. Men only use their left side or something like that. Anyway, when man and woman are together, they are the complete image and likeness of God. Because they, they were they, they, everything they possessed. Now, so... Number three, we were created in the image and likeness of God. That's number three. Now, John wrote about Jesus, and he was trying to clarify a point here. And Jesus looked at these people because they were taking up stones, getting ready to stone him. This is one of my favorite passages in the Bible, is John 10. Because I love John 10.10. 10. He says, The thief cometh not but to kill, steal, and destroy. But I've come to give life, and life more abundantly. This is what God has intended for every one of you. Not to be down in the mully grubs, but to rise to the elevation of what he has for you. Amen? Oh, praise God. That, that's good. So you can live in the mully grubs, or you can live in the abundant life. And it's not life everlasting that he's talking about. This isn't something you're going to get in the sweet by and by. But he said to give them life and life more abundant. So he's not talking just about our futuristic experience, but right now. And so many of us are not living there. And unfortunately, I did not always live there. So as I'm teaching you, I'm teaching myself. I'm coming to an understanding of this that, that I want to be more like Jesus because I begin to understand the power and authority, the, the, all that comes with being created in the image and likeness of God. So Jesus said, I've done all these good works for you. For which of these good works are you going to stone me? Now listen to the answer. You've got to listen to this very carefully. Don't let anybody distract you right now. Listen to this, what he says. And the Jews answered. 
Is it Keith? Kylie? Keith? Kyle? Well, why'd you say no when I said Keith? I said, are you Keith? Trying to confuse me. So he looked at him, <laughs> and it, they said, we're not going to stone you for the good works you're doing. We're going to stone you for blasphemy. Because you being a man. Now, what was Jesus when he came to earth? A man. He was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That's what the scripture says. That's what Adam was created. That's why the Bible says he's the second Adam. He had all the attributes that Adam had. He had all the male parts. He had all the female parts. And don't think that I'm weird about that. I'm talking about the emotional uh, level that was here. That's why, you know, many times he would get frustrated with them and you would see this feminine quality come out of him. And why, you know, they would say... Uh, you know, he's weeping because, you know, Lazarus and stuff like that. You know, when men don't weep. We don't cry. We tough up and say, Lazarus, come out of there. Quit, you know. But anyway, that's another sermon. That's another whole theology class. I want us to focus on right now. You being a man. Say that. You being a man. Or a woman. You being a man are blaspheming and making yourself to be God. Now that's what they're really getting ready to stone him for. Why did they crucify Jesus? Does anybody know why? What was the blasphemy, James? Claiming to be God. And he ripped his garments and say do we need any more proof they took him to Pontius Pilate Pilate, Pilate says what <laughs> what are you guys talking about you know this is stupid but to please the people he let the high priest take the lamb of God and lay him on the altar of sacrifice which only Jesus could do because he was the perfect lamb of God. He was Emmanuel, God come in the flesh. God with us. Okay, are you, are you getting hold of this? So, now, I could stop right there and say, okay, that's good enough theology. But Jesus turns around and answers them and says, Barbara, have you not read the Bible have you read the Bible? Have you read it from Genesis to Revelation? Yes. You have. Did you ever read over in Psalms 82? You don't remember what it is? Would you like to remember what it says right now? Why don't, do you have a Bible with you? Don't. You don't. You have a Bible? You, you got your phone Bible. Well, the phone Bible will work. Praise God. I, Psalm 82... I don't care if it's King James, NIV. I don't care what it is. I just, I just, have you found it? Psalm 82? That's after 81. Unless you, you can't see it? Okay. I'm, I've got her all nervous. That's what the problem is. See? Have you found it yet? Or are you still turning nervous? You got it? Good. Read Psalm 82, 6. I, wait, now first of all, who said? You'd have to read the other five verses to say, find out who said. And if you read those other five verses, you're going to find the I is God. Okay, so what did he say? What? You are what? You are God. <laughs> now, <laughs> now I'm, not, I'm asking you this because... See, we don't read the Bible. Now, I'm not talking about going to Salt Lake City 
<laughs> and getting the, a theology book right here. I'm talking about the Word of God that you have right there in your hands. I'm talking about what the Word of God says right now. Because Jesus answered them and said, Have you not read in your where it's written in the Torah, in the Tanakh, I said, you are gods. And the word there for gods is Elohim. Elohim. Which is another name that is used for God Almighty. El Ohim. El is the mighty one the mighty one so here he is quoting from a psalm that is saying you guys don't even know your own bible have you not read you are gods so why are you accusing me of being a god are you understand the rationale now okay and and so what's their answer their, their answer is uh, uh he says if if you if he called them gods to whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken do you say of him whom the father sanctified and sent into the world you are blaspheming which Jesus was sent into the world because I said I am the son of God now do you understand what I'm saying this morning because if we were created in the image and likeness of God, whose sons and daughters are we? So what does that make us? Gods. Now, now you might say, oh, Pastor Dan, you're a hairy tick. You know, I, I can't buy this right now. Now, I want to tell you something right now. He, he did not say that you are the God. Now, Jesus is the God. But we were created in the image and likeness of him. Now I'm going to look at another scripture right now. And so he says, if I do the works of my father, do not, if I don't do them, don't believe me. But if I do, believe me. In other words, if Christians would start acting like God, maybe they would believe our Jesus a little bit more. Okay? So he says, so I want to look at another passage that has been mistranslated. Now this one, this blew me away. Now I'm bringing this all up because we're talking about the image and likeness of Jesus. If we don't know who we are in the beginning, you're not going to know who you are in the finish. Okay? Now women, most of you did not look like you do right now when you got up this morning. What did you do? You went to the mirror and you put on a different image. Okay? It's good. Because <laughs> I've seen some of you without your image. I've seen my wife without her image. <laughs> I've seen my mother-in-law without her image. <laughs> I've seen my daughter without her image. Praise God that you go for mirrors. Amen. All the men ought to say amen. That's the trouble when you get married and you look over and you turn over in bed and you look at her for the first time and say, oh my God. <laughs> well, you're right. They are gods. So anyway, you're, you're doing good. So, so, so this mistranslation, my friend, Yaron, came over here and he says, what's wrong with your Bible? And I says, what's wrong with our Bible? He says, it's not translated correctly. He's got the real Hebrew Bible. And he reads the real Hebrew Bible. And he says in this scripture, in Psalm 8, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordered, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visited him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels. That is a mistranslation. And if you go to your Strong's Concordance, and you go to your Bible, you will find the word translated there, angel, is the same word that's found in Psalm 82.6, 
Elohim. What is man that you are mindful of him, that you made him a little bit lower than yourself? And it says, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. Lucifer and his angels is not the crowning glory of God's creation. We are. The word of God says we are the crowning glory of God's kingdom. We need to act like we're the crowning glory of God's kingdom. We need to start acting like Jesus. We got to know who we are. We are the redeemed of the Lord. And you made him have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. What happened? There in the garden, we handed our papers over to the devil and you said, here, you have the right to have dominion. Jesus, four, six thousand, ten thousand years later, I don't know how long, came back and said, I'm taking them back. You no longer have dominion over this earth. Your day is coming. And in the book of Revelation, it says, I saw Satan fall like lightning to the earth. And the pit was open in the bottomless pit and he was thrown in it and cast with all of his angels for a thousand years. We are soon approaching that day. You better start thinking about who you, who you are in that mirror. So we read over in Hebrews, and this is another mistranslation because I can tell you it's a mistranslation because he quotes this psalm where it says Elohim. And your Strong's Bible will say messenger or something like that. And it, probably because, you know, we don't want to be arrogant. We don't want to be prideful. We don't want to go around saying, we're gods, we're gods. That would be stupid. But to know who you are is not stupid. See, if, if, I'm, if I'm Prince Andrew over in Afghanistan, I am Prince Andrew of England. And my position does not change just because I'm a soldier and I sleep on a cot. I know who I am. And when I get through doing this cot, I'm trying to do this to show all my brothers that we can fight this war together. But I am one of the heirs to the throne of England. And nobody can take that away from me. And that's what all I'm saying is, you don't have to go around with a big old Jesus pin and a Jesus badge and say, look at me, I look like Jesus, I am God, I'm a little God. No, you are. You don't have to act like it, you are. But you do need to act like it. Because you've got to understand your position. You've got to understand your th authority. For he, he, what, listen to this. For he has not put, this is this mistranslation over in Hebrews, the second chapter. For he has not put the world to come, of which we speak, in subjection to angels. I want you to look at that. For he has not put the world to come, of which we speak, in subjection to angels. He has not put the world to come under the subjection of angels. He did not create this world for the devil and his angels. He created this world for you and I. You understand? He has given us all dominion and all authority. That's what the scripture says. That's what Genesis says. Just because we sold it our birthright like Esau doesn't mean to buy into J, uh, uh, Jacob's lie and let Jacob steal it away from us. We say, I'm sorry, but he despised it. And too many Christians despise their birthright. And your birthright is that you were created, born in the likeness and the image of God. You are the sons and daughters of the Almighty God. Then you need to start acting like it. Oh, praise God. But he said, he testified in a certain place. The quote out of that passage of Psalm 8. But what is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man. Talking about the son of man. Who is our brother, our kindred brother. Now he's talking about Jesus. He's asking that. 
that you take care of him. You have made him a little bit lower than the angels is what the scripture says. And the word is Elohim. You have made him a little bit lower than God. You have crowned him with glory and honor. And you have set him under the works of all your hands. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all the subjection under his feet. He has left nothing that is not put under his feet. But now we do not see all these things under him. But we see Jesus who was made a little. And we read that scripture who was made. And the word made there. And I want you to go home. I want you to study out that passage. The word made there is not what the Jehovah's Witness say is created. It means I have subjected myself under the authority. Almighty God says I'm going to come down and I'm going to make myself to be like a man. That's what the word made here. It's not talking about created. And see people that don't know the word, that's where they get all the confusion. Because the Jehovah's Witness will come in and says, well, Jesus is not God because he was created. No. That's not what the word of God says. Jesus is God. He is the son of God. He is the second member of the Trinity. Don't you ever forget it. And the third member of the Trinity dwells in every believer in this house right now. And has given you power and authority. Because he said, after that, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and will do you with power from on high. Now, if you want to be a jackass and just sit there and not do anything, that's your decision. But I'm going to rise to the standard that he has given me, and I'm going to rise up. I'm going to get on my high horse. I'm going to take back what the enemy has stolen from me. He has stolen, and he owes me sevenfold. He's stolen my marriage. He's stolen my children. After our child died, Debbie and I came under a great attack. I especially, because I couldn't understand why God would do this. And God says, I'm going to give you a blessing. I'm going to give you a blessed child. And my daughter, I swear, you can believe this or not, is the most blessed woman that I know on planet Earth. Not because she's my daughter. But she, she remained a virgin until she was married. She didn't go out on dates because dates lead to other things. She did not look at a man twice. She waited until daddy said, hey, I like that Paul and that colored man, Paul. She always had an affection for colored man. So there she found her colored man. But he colored himself. I didn't know that. But he, anyway, he's not the man I would have chose, but that's the man that God chose because she was going to be doubly blessed. Oh, praise God. All things. But we see Jesus, who was made the word, should not be made as a, a created, but he became. He became a little lower than God himself. What did he do in Philippians? It tells us he emptied himself. In other words, he came into this world and walked just like you and I did. He relied on God for everything. For his daily bread. Everything. Until he was 30 years old. And you read this in the scripture because he did no mighty works until after the endowment of the power of the Holy Spirit came upon him. He was tempted of the devil for 40 days, driven by the spirit out into the wilderness, and he came back and started doing miraculous works. He did not do it in his flesh. He did it by the spirit of God that was in him. So if Jesus said, I did it, you can do it. But it's not going to be from up here. It's not going to be from here. It's going to be from in here. This is a good preaching, Pastor. He said, For the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God might taste death for us all. For it was fitting for him for whom were are all things, by whom are all things, in bringing many sons and daughters to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Now, listen to this. If then... We are created in the image and likeness of God. And if we are of the same nature and quality of God, then would it not stand to reason that we should act and be like God? 
through the redemptive work of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit who now lives in us and that all things are under our feet because he is the head and we are the body. And I feel sorry for some of you feet people because you're trampling on demons <laughs> and snakes and they're biting you and whacking at you. So, number four, if we are like him, we should act like him. Now, did Paul leave again this time or is he here in the house this time? Paul? Where does he go? I need, you to t I need to tell you the story about Paul, what happened. Because it goes right along, if we are like him, we should act like him. Okay? Paul, are you anywhere? Did he go home? Huh? Is he out to lunch? So, so you know, last week he was speaking, and he was talking about the power of our words. Okay, Paul, why don't you come right over here right now? Finally found you. And he was talking about the power of our words. And the reason why he was so emphatic about that is because he says, out of our mouth comes death and life, blessing and cursing. And so we, we don't know the weight of our words. If God said this, God said, his word will not return void. Why do we think that our words won't produce what we've told them to do? Especially if we were created in his likeness and his image. Our words carry power and weight. And every idle word is going to be judged. Now, Paul, get, get the mic right there. Because I can't share it like you do. Debbie, Debbie's got it right there. This is what takes so much time. My sermons are only about five minutes long, but it's trying to find people when I need them. Okay. Paul, the uh, other day, uh, Heather wasn't feeling well, and you were driving home, and you went into the Maverick. Tell me, tell me why you went into the Maverick. Do you remember the story now? No, yeah. no, we're, I'm not trying to elevate Paul here by any means. What I'm trying to do, if we are like him, then we should act like him. Okay? So while he's telling this story, remember that. If we are like him, we should act like Jesus. Okay. So I, I was just on my way home, and uh, uh, it was after youth night, so it was about 10 o'clock at night, and... Um, uh, just decided to uh, go to the Maverick there. I was going to just get some gas and a snack, you know, because it was late. My wife, you know, she probably hadn't cooked me anything. or um, So I pulled in and uh, got my gas, and I saw a guy over on the corner. He's just banging away on the front of his vehicle, you know, tire off. And I, I, it was like 13 degrees outside. It was just freezing just a couple of weeks ago. And it's 13-degree weather. I, th I thought, man, I am so glad I'm not that guy. <laughs> so I got my so, gas. So right there, I'm selfishly thinking. Right. I'm glad I'm that's not exactly, like other people. That's right. Um, so I went in, did my thing, got my stuff, and went out. And uh, um, again, I, this guy is just banging away. And I thought, man, it just really would be terrible to be this guy right now working in the cold. I know, you know, hitting your hands, again, you know. And... Uh, I just felt like the Holy Spirit said, well, why don't you go help him? And I said, get behind me, Satan. How dare you? <laughs> not, not in 13 degree weather, right? That, that's not God, okay? Okay, keep going, Paul. Um, so, uh, gets in his nice warm vehicle. I thought to myself, there's, well, you know, he's probably got everything he needs. So, but I just felt this prompting to go and see if there's something I could do there was I just more out of just like okay I'll do it he's probably going to say he doesn't need anything and I'll just be on my way but I went over there and um the Spanish-speaking guy uh Colorado plates and I thought man this poor guy and I just asked him hey is there is there anything Colorado plates he was used to the cold so yeah. you know I just asked him 
do you have everything you need? Does he what? have a hat on? Did you yeah, tell me yeah, in? yeah. But I, anyway, so I, I asked him if you know if he had all the tools he needed, and I asked him what he was doing. He had a bearing seize on the on his spindle on his vehicle, and he's trying to pull the the this seized up bearing off of there. And um, he showed me what he was doing, and so I went home and I, I said, "I'll be right back. I live about a mile from here. I'll be right back and I see if I have a cold chisel." And so I went home, got the cold chisel, and he was still banging away on that thing and he chiseled it off as soon as as soon as he got the chisel just kind of came right off you know with a few kind of smacks of the hammer and and i noticed his hat it said uh push pray until something happens i love jesus and so i uh so i asked i i said i bought him a coffee and you know just just uh shared with it. i said hey man I, I really feel like god the lord led me over here to go ask you this stuff and and he said, he said, yeah, he said, you're an angel. Um, and then, and then. <laughs> All's an angel. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, no, he's but Elohim. He, he's he Elohim. To, he pointed to his hat and he said, yeah, you pray until something happens. So that's the story. Okay, praise God. Uh, if we're going to, amen. If we're going to be like Jesus, we're going to have to start acting like Jesus. We see the man along the road. We see the person that, that's stranded and everything else. It doesn't hurt to take three seconds to ask, can I help? Do you have a need? Whatever. See, we want all the glory and the glamour. And that's where, that's where Jesus emptied himself and took of himself no reputation. He didn't go around. In fact, he told people, he says, don't tell anybody. Jesus says, thou, uh, I mean, Peter said, you are the... the, the the Hamashiach of God. You are the Messiah of God. And Jesus said, do not tell anybody that. Don't tell anybody because they won't understand. If you leave this place and you go out here and you start going around telling people that Pastor Dan says we're Elohims. We're Elohims. We're, we're gods. They're going to think we're nuts. They will. I'm telling you this so that you know in yourself, in your spirit, who you are. Now Satan is a manipulator. In the garden, we can see he takes God's word and twists it. Jesus being tempted of the devil three times. He takes the word of God and twists it. So the devil would take these passages that we just read and twist them and said, you're not made in the image and likeness of God. You're a little bit lower than the angels. And you know what I am? I'm an angel. I'm one of the highest order of angels. I am the anointed cherubim. You should be bowing down before me. I am the one that has the dominion, not you. See how he has twisted the word? Now listen to this. Yeah, give, give the Lord a clap. Amen. That's good. There's an illustration of this in the Old Testament. It's the story of Joseph and Pharaoh. And Joseph, uh, and of course in Daniel too, I mean, uh, both of these men were very honorable men, raised up to high esteem. And the reason why is because they did not care what men thought. They only cared what God thought. Joseph, by his integrity, Daniel, by his integrity. In fact, Daniel was brought before Nebuchadnezzar and all the soothsayers, and they said, Hey, uh, tell us the dream and we'll tell you what it, what it means. And he says, I know your tricks. He says, I'm not going to tell you my dream. Well, there's nobody that can tell you what you dreamt. But there was. And Daniel went to him and says, Listen, O king, I, there is a God in heaven that knows everything. That's who I worship. And this is what you dreamt. And he told him the dream. Later on, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, and he told Daniel what it was. And Daniel said to him, I believe he told Daniel, 
And Daniel said, may this be on your enemies. But Nebuchadnezzar said, go ahead and tell me, because I trust you. And he says, you're going to be like an animal for seven years. I mean, I, that's a tough thing. But, but Joseph went before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh heard the dreams. And Pharaoh told him the dreams. And he said, Pharaoh, the, the dreams are two dreams, but they're one and the same. They're telling a story about that for the next seven years, this land is going to blossom. It is going to have more abundance than any time in all of its history. But after this, it's going to be a great drought for seven years. Pharaoh, after having all these soothsayers and everybody else try to interpret his dream, said, who in all of Egypt can we find that could take care of this problem? It was the Son of God. It was Joseph. It was Joseph, and he said, Joseph, now this is the, the relationship between us and God. God is like Pharaoh. There's no one else higher than Pharaoh. But at the, down here, we have been lifted up as Joseph. We are man just like Pharaoh. Pharaoh may have thought he was a god, but he was not. And we have been elevated. And Joseph, every place he went, they all had to bow the knee. And that's the relationship, is that he never became Pharaoh. He said, in everything, you have rule over all of Egypt except one thing, this throne. And that's what God has given us, the authority and power. He says, all authority has give, been given to me on heaven and earth. And he says, I give you that authority and that power. So we need to renew our minds. We need to, to uh, recognize who we are. We, uh, we, we need to uh, look at Satan. And, and we need to see that since uh, we have been redeemed, we are now in the very character, likeness, and Im image of Jesus. And the devil can throw his lies at us and tell us, try, try to have authority over us. But listen to this. Number five, Satan doesn't want us to know we are superior to him in creation. It's like this. God and the greatest part of his creation is man. And then all these angels. And the Bible says the angels were made for God to do his bidding and they are to do our bidding. Oh, you, you need to understand that. Do you know there are clouds of angels right now that are standing around waiting for us to tell them what to do? I don't see them. They're there. They're there. Oh, praise God. A place for everyone. A place for everyone. A place for everyone. For everyone. 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 Everyone.